Hello, I'm Adam. Welcome to Adam's Space. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make a DNA helix structure like this in Tinkercad. So the core uh, of what we are dealing with here is just going to be uh, spheres and cylinders. So for this demonstration, I am going to be using the high resolution sphere and high resolution cylinder just because I like those shapes. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to start with a sphere that um, is, let's just say, 30, uh, 30 millimeter sphere. And now um, I'm going to put this here, and we're going to have a cylinder that is um, 100 millimeters long. You can change these lengths and sizes to taste or just uh, scale them afterwards. Um, and we are going to align this uh, centered here and centered here and to the edge there. Once it's to the edge there, um, I'm going to go ahead and just nudge this over until it's as far over as it'll go. Or as uh, far as over it goes and still be well connected. And that seems to be about right here. Okay, uh, now we're going to hit Control D on this cylinder, and we're going to move it to the other side. To move it to the other side, I'm going to momentarily increase my uh, snap grid, and then we're going to go through and get this a bit more fine-tuned like we had on the other side. Okay, so now we have this uh, base structure. The question is, how do we get this rotate and this twist the way it needs to be? Um, well, that's simple enough. Actually, first let me change this to a 10 um, by 10 bar. And now we will, we're going to lock these in place because um, we like that positioning. And we're just going to get this centered here and there. Okay, so we've got our uh, starting point. I'm going to go ahead and unlock these now. And uh, what we're going to do now is uh, what you're going to do is you're going to control D or command D on Mac to copy it. We're going to raise this structure up by 30 millimeters. And then we're going to rotate it um, by 30 millimeters. Now you'll notice right away, or 30 degrees rather, you'll notice right away that uh, you know, we could hit Control D continually, and we would get our uh, helix shape, but uh, there's no lines connecting connecting these, so it's simply a visual representation. Though, might I say, a kind of cool one. But we want to have these connecting lines. Um, now, I'm sure there's some kind of math uh, formula that we could use to find out what angle this needs to be, but truthfully, that's not what I did because I, I couldn't figure that out. So let me show you what I did instead. Um, again, Control D, uh, raise up by 30, and then uh, rotate 30 degrees. Um, my rotate by 30 degrees, that's just the taste. Again, you can change that uh, based on um, how you want yours to look. Oop. I can get myself back where I was. Okay, just gonna select it this way and then rotate by 30. Okay, so the way that I did this is um, we started with this ball here and I locked this ball. Um, I grabbed a uh, block. I made this um, literally uh, one millimeter by one millimeter. Okay, and then I stretched this up tall, um, taller than it needed to be. Uh, and now with that cylinder locked, we go ahead and line this up and center it. And with this lined up and centered, I need to figure out, you know, what's the degree that gives me a good uh, connection 
um, between these two uh, uh, spheres. And so I just hit uh, Control D and I rotated it over, I did five degrees, um, actually in this case, negative five degrees, negative five, and then negative five. And we just continually did that until I got a um, uh, shape that was um, until I, I had a good uh, sense of direction um, this way. And then there's also a rotation that's inwards. So once I had the sense of direction that I like that was um, this way, which we'll just say is, um, we'll just say it's this way. I'm not gonna go through and calculate it like I did before, but uh, let's just say it's that one. Then you can delete the rest of these. Um, and the one I found that I liked here is 45 degrees. And once I had the 45 degree angle that I liked, then I took that one and I did control D and I rotated that one again in five degree increments. Um, and then until I picked the one that I liked and I, I liked the 15 degree angle. So knowing that I um, want 45 and 15, and this was my trial and error to kind of figure out what visually looked the best, um, I can now uh, create a, another cylinder. Um, we're going to first put this upright at 90. Uh, I'm going to make it, uh, we'll just say 25 high. We're going to center it. Once we have this centered, uh, I still do need to raise it a bit. Uh, we're gonna fine tune this raising it uh, once it's in position, but we're going to rotate it first 45 degrees, uh, negative 45 actually. And now we're gonna rotate it uh, 15 degrees. Okay. Um, and now we just have to position it to uh, connect these two pieces and uh, visually, um, again, I guess to taste. So I like having them right here. Let's see. I like how it's kind of centered on the top, centered on the side. I like that connection. And so now what we're going to do, we aren't going to nudge this. We aren't going to change our orientation at all. But what we're going to do is um, we're going to hit Control D on this. And we're going to increase our snap grid. We're going to rotate this over here. Obviously, this is facing the wrong direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my mirror tool and I'm going to flip it uh, this way and also this way and then uh, we should be able to um, hold on. push it over here um, and get this connection and we can fine-tune that we should be good here I want to push this in a little bit more. There we go. Um, so I like this connection. So now that we have this uh, here, what we're actually going to do is we're going to delete um, our top three pieces. So we just have this here. And then with this uh, total assembly, we're going to uh, select everything. Um, make sure we don't have any lock shapes. So I'm going to just lock everything and unlock everything. We're going to hit Command D uh, or Control D to copy everything here. We're going to lift it up again by 30 um, and then rotate it by 30. 
this will uh, copy our exact position that we had before. Um, and now all we have to do is just hit Control D continually, and it will give us our uh, spiral uh, helix shape. Um, so that's how you make this. Now, if I were to print this, because our angles here are kind of approximate, uh, even though it looks vaguely the same, it's going to be actually different. So um, if I were to print this, what I would do, I'm just going to control Z uh, a couple times, I would actually turn these into holes. Um, and then I would uh, mark and print the cylinders. Um, or the, the spheres uh, individually. Um, oh, I think I have a one, two, delete, 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 because we still had uh, one copy, which means I should be able to delete a sphere. Uh, it should just be one. Yep, so we uh, turn these into holes, and then I can create my helix structure, uh, same as we did before. Uh, and then just individually print the spheres and then sh uh, just shrink down the diameter of the pipes. Um, but uh, once those should shrunk down just like half a millimeter or so, uh, those can remain the same size and you just plug each individual hole. So um, just to uh, show this off really quick, uh, we're going to raise this up by 30. And then we're going to rotate it by 30. Um, we're going to hit Control D. So now I would print um, individually. I would specifically export and print this cylinder and specifically export and print this cylinder and just go the whole way up. Um, you would only need uh, a, uh, so we started with a 10, so say a 10 millimeter hole. So in terms of a cylinder, um, you would just need to make one that is uh uh, let's just say 9.5 and 9.5. That way you have proper clearance. And then we did, um, I think we made these 30 high, which means this would still be uh, 30 high. And then the other one was 100 high. So we're going to just hit Control D and then make this one 100. Uh, so you would just print. Um, each one of these cylinders, those wouldn't have to be individualized, but your spheres would have to be individualized. Um, so that's how you make and print a DNA uh, helix uh, in and from Tinkercad. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like. If you found multiple of my videos helpful, consider subscribing. Either way, thank you for your time and have a great day.